We are the intro. There it is. Uh huh. Yeah. You feeling it? I don't know. I'm not really, not really a we, dancer. We should but definitely not do that we, ever again. That was like that's why I don't go to visual clubs. vomit. Actually, hey, it's uh, Lex and Alex from PDQ.com. Yeah, that's right, guys. Hey, hygiene, and we're not talking the patchouli type. I don't know what that means, but some it's about definitely hippies, not I what guess. He's but uh, <laughs> <laughs> password hygiene. Um, you know, forget what you know. What's that statement from every movie? Forget what you think you know about passwords, because Alex wrong. is gonna. He's going to educate us all. So we're, should we jump in and talk about? Let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. So what that means is. What does that mean? When you were when you were growing up and started to figure out what passwords were and had to create a password for an email account that you started. I know that's kind of where I first got into what a password was. Um, they always told you try to make it complex, right? Use yeah. some symbols and some letters. And They're like, yeah, some they always had these. They always had these strange policies around what what should you do to create a strong password. Well, that is no longer the case. Yeah. Um, the the new norm has moved from using a password from that and changed it into using a passphrase. And by that I mean no longer are we using a single word with jumbled text in there. We're yeah, now we're, using sentences. Yeah, so every time you use a dollar sign instead of the letter S, it's really not that secure, guys. Yeah. Ultimately, you should go for length. Yes. Length right? Length will always beat complexity, no matter what. It, it all comes down to math, really. Absolutely. So we have, a, we have a website we'd like to show you that's found in the bonus content as well. Um, this, this site particularly is not meant is not meant for actual passwords it's more of like a general test <laughs> so please don't ever enter an actual let, password let us qualify this okay it don't is. test your real passwords test something kind of like it okay test something lengthwise definitely but you know when you put in password one you know your real password you probably well let's just pop one in let's see what it All looks right. like okay so password one let's just do password let's one type right in here. Password. Now, it's not going to show us what what i'm typing all right but as you can see, it, it's saying that the password is reasonable in strength, uh, that there's 40 bits of entropy. So what is entropy? Because this, this is where things start making it difficult to crack passwords is your entropy level, right? Right, yeah. The higher the entropy means the better the password and the more difficult it would be to crack in theory. Now, entropy is kind of like saying, what's the likelihood of another word or letter occurring after what's already been typed or presented. Like predictable, like words like, uh, talking to my mom, she was sick and tired. You know, sick always followed tired. So that kind of uh, is it's predictable. It's usually a combination of, I'm sick and tired of you, Lex. Yeah, but that was always uh, the case. But, you know, <laughs> just, it, that, that's the kind of thing with entry right. is, is predictability there. So now let's just go in here and do this. Like, uh, do you want me to uh, I would like you to type my favorite, uh, we're going to modify this. I like a South Park. Uh, phrase, which is, your mother is on the cover of Vogue magazine. Yeah, that's a different... That was, from, a, that was a close one. Yeah, I, I did. I cleaned that up. Yeah. Okay, check it out. The length is 37 characters long. Uh -huh. Did you put spaces in? I did not. You did? You I did don't not. remember. I just started typing. I don't think I did, no. Then, okay, so at this point, the entropy is 141. A lot, a lot higher than before. It was 40, I believe, before. So if you were talking lengthwise, how long does it take to crack, say, an eight-character password? So that depends on the hardware you're using. But for just example purposes, uh, I looked up some statistics on kind of the math behind this. And if I were to have an eight-character password, it would take roughly three and a half seconds, depending on, or three, excuse me, three and a half minutes. Seconds, I'm like, wow. Seconds, excuse me, three and a half minutes. Okay, Give so can we show them a, an example? We've got, you know, we had some people send in their MD5 hashes, and yeah. we're, we're going to start this, and then we're going to look at it off screen to make sure nobody sent any passwords in yeah. like I usually do, which is, right, uh, so what is it, how do you say it, JJ? Security through impurity? impurity right. Yeah, we're, we're correct. So I've already queued it all up. We don't have to go through the typing of all that. I'm going to kick that off, and we will let it we'll run. We'll just drag it off the side and let that start running. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll run that in the background. Okay, let's take a question while, well, uh, there you go. Dear Lex and Alex, in the world of SSO and the increasing security breaches of platforms that act as the broker, such as the recent Facebook breach, do you think SSO is still a reliable option over something like a standalone password manager? Thanks, Jeremy O. 
Thanks, Jeremy, for uh, the question. Okay, first of all, SSO. SSO is short for single sign-on, which means you can utilize, say, like your Google account or your Facebook account to sign on to a, a different service. So uh, I know that's a, a Facebook and Google are probably the two most common that I've seen most popular, for yeah. SSO. So if I were you, Jeremy, I would say SSO is still reliable if you're utilizing a, what we call two-factor authentication, which means that you're, you're using your single sign-on username and password from that, from that account, but you have an extra layer of security through a two-factor token, which could be a physical token that you have with you. It could, it could be through like the Google Authenticator app. You know what I mean? So, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I'm like, I'm just watching you going nerd, 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 nerd. nerd, nerd. nerd. Two, fa <laughs> just, two no, factor. This is two factor. You know, have your phone come up, right? I'm, I'm sorry. That is exactly correct. I just, you know, we do it here, two factor authentication. I got to have my phone. And that's why every time I log in here, I got to run back to my desk. <laughs> To get my phone because I can't keep my phone in here because it rings in the middle of the show, right? I get so, angry when, it, yeah, yeah. when my yeah. phone gets on. No one wants to hear his ringtones either. Well, that is uh, true. That also, is very true. But, so, I'm sorry I was laughing, man. I just like, oh, you're good. Nerd, nerd, nerd. But yeah, two factor authentication. Two factor. Uh, <laughs> and the other thing is this, right? You're ultimately, you're only as secure as your password, right? right? So the more complex your password, the better. So, you know, passphrases and sentences. Pass phrase. Colby, you. Eyebrows are up. You have some thoughts, buddy? Uh, I agree with everything that's been said. It, uh, you know, just make sure uh, get the the password nice and long. Uh, don't. Yeah, I agree. You agree? Yeah. Okay. That would well, be a yes. I agree. Let's go over to a different website that actually Colby introduced me to, um, and it's it talks a little bit more of, of the numbers behind your password. So, like we mentioned before, what was that password you said? My your mother's on the cover of Vogue magazine. Now, excuse me if I spell Vogue wrong. I don't know how to spell it either. All right. Um, there's a lot of things going on here, but basically the number we want to look at is down here at this 4.96 times 10 to the 79. So What exactly? I mean, that's a bunch of math, and math can be difficult. But yeah, that's kind of like the... Uh, how do I put this, Colby? Can you? Is that the number of attempts it's going to make to crack that? Or, uh, uh, yeah, basically. So, so that's I mean, that, that's a very long. That's a that's a that's um, very it, long. It's very difficult for humans. Lots to of zeros. Yeah. No, I understand that's a big number, but can't you do like seven million three hundred thousand attempts per whatever it is? To you can do about uh, seven hundred million, depending on yeah. So. Required. Oh, read. Yeah. Reading. It's fundamental. Read. Okay. Well, if we scroll down a bit. So it kind of explains below what we were just talking about with the online attack scenario 9.31 hundred million trillion 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 centuries to crack that to password. To crack. If you're, using, if you're using a brute force method. Um, there's various methods which we won't go, in, go into, but you can kind of understand that complexity. Really isn't so. Let's put in let's put in what we think might be a complex password and just see what the difference might be. So you know, like if I were to capital do like letter. capital P A and then do like dollar signs W and then O and then and then let's do like some lead speak stuff and then or that's for the uh, there you go there you go. All right, look, we have this really complex looking password and let's put some like this. There you go. Yeah. Well, that's only going to take us 2.5900 billion. But centuries. here, if you watch this, right, I just take one character away. How fast? How how, much look quicker. how far down we've already come. Six minutes, massive crack scenario. Yeah. Yep. Just because of the length, right now. Again, this is you know this is a typical password you would have like you know way back in the day, back in what 2008. Oh dang it! Yeah, yeah. Last no, week. 2008. 2008. This would be a complex password, right? Exactly. Well, at least we thought so. Or, well, but, maybe not the password, but, but right. the combinations and, and those, there. Those have changed. Um, now, I know some people are trying to think, well, how on earth do I generate a good passphrase? Well, there's actually a site that, oddly enough, comes up with, uh, it's called Diceware. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what they do is they actually take physical dice and they roll those dice. And depending on what they roll, they look at a chart and, and that determines what phrase or excuse me, what word to use, and you kind of chain those together 
to make your phrase. Now, I'm not saying that this is the only method or the best method. It's just a method that some people have found to find that absolute random phrase. Okay, so a random phrase. So make that sentence more random, like uh, uh, glass, scotch, mint, mouse. Things that are things I mean, that are uncommon. So the okay, that's uncommon. But yeah. I'm never going to remember that, man. I you mean, I'll remember not. it like for ten seconds. Right, and I know that uh, the previous question that was just asked is, do we still use password managers? And that's exactly what this would help to um, I, I, help I, I, you remember, because I, you're not you're never going to remember fifty different passwords, or excuse me, passphrases that have this level of, of complexity. Okay, so that, that brings me to my next question. All right, I've got my online banking, I've got my mail, yeah. I've got my, uh, I don't have Facebook, I don't have Twitter. Somebody has that stuff, Some, right? Someone. You've got that kind of thing, you've got your online purchasing, your Amazon and that. Yeah. If I use the same password, okay, on all those. Problem is, there's once, a pro well, there's a problem right there. You're using the same password across multiple accounts. All right, and again, so back to this password manager. Mm -hmm. The complexity level of the passphrase, not password. I need something to help me remember it. And so, I mean, I know from our package library, you can use like uh, Key Pass, and that's a free one. It works really well. Yep. The one thing though is you got to remember the master password. If you forget that's, that, you're pretty much. Uh, that's one you would write write down and put in a safe that's probably protected by like. Put it on uh, a post-it note. Stick it on your monitor, that's like what Lex everybody does. in accounting yes. does. Absolutely. I'm just kidding. Sorry, accountant. Usually, but. what I would do or recommend doing is if you have a master password that opens the vault to your safe, or excuse me, your password safe. As, as you will, uh, put that, on, you know, write it down on a piece of paper and physically lock that away somewhere where nobody has physical access to it but you. That's either lock under, you know, under lock and key or just a, uh, somewhere where nobody gets. Not under your keyboard, nowhere in your office. It should no, it'd be nowhere near a computer. It should be somewhere away and safe, kind of like your passport. Put it with your passport. Let's put it that way. In my sock drawer. Maybe don't put it in your passport. <laughs> don't put it with your my passport, passport and soccer. Maybe Lex just needs a different. <laughs> <laughs> Can we take a question, JJ? Dear Lex and Alex, what about password age? Current thoughts are that employees should have passwords that never expire. Rely on them to change them if they think that the password has become vulnerable. Thanks, Adam H. <clears throat> Adam, that's a great question. Yeah, you know, I think there's a couple schools of thought on this, right? There I mean, are. okay. So for the longest time, it's been like what every sixty, ninety days, change them, right? I, well, I used to I used to work at a financial institution, yeah. and our requirement was we had to change it every sixty days, and that got super old, super fast. And the problem with that was everybody that had to change their password every sixty days would usually pr uh, just modify it, add add like a number one or a number two. Or depending on how whatever number they were on changing that password, they or would or writing it on a sticky note, or they would write it down <laughs> exactly. So my my um, proposal would be to if they if if you can teach your users strong complex phrases that we've discussed earlier, if they can utilize that and put it into good practice, there shouldn't really ever need to be. It. Uh, a requirement to change that password unless you do suspect a breach or s some other um, somebody else might have compromised that password. Now that I'll leave that up to your discretion, but um, there, there's a couple of reasons why, and one of them we hit on was because it's just people get lazy, right? They start writing it down, or they want to just add a number at the end. Well, you say think about it, right? Number two. I'm, a, I'm a creature of habit, right? Yeah. I put the same password in, like, oh, now i got to change it. So the next day, I type in three times, i got to call you. Alex, I forgot my <laughs> password. you got to unlock my, you know what I mean? Yeah, I forgot my password. Yeah, I forgot my password. But, okay, so here's the thing. Teach them complex phrases, okay? So, again, is there a way, I mean, okay, complex. Complex to me is different than complex to you, right? right? So complex for some people is, you know, you know, 12 characters, 13 characters. So there's a way to number the, the number of characters. I mean, here, we've yeah. got a group policy editor here. Yep. And the thing about it is, instead of making it like complex, make it length. So they have to have a, a length of a, you want to show them here? Yeah, so here we have the <clears throat> default uh, group policy for uh, your Windows-based passwords. And in here you can, you can enforce the history, which means how often can they reuse a password? Well, we want to get away from that altogether. So that, that, <clears throat> Kind of shouldn't be a thing we focus on with regard to what we're talking about today. Uh, your maximum password age and length. Age and length, yeah. So your minimum password age 
is just how frequently they can change it. Your minimum password length, um, I would recommend no less than 10 characters. And really, if you follow the, the passphrase guideline, it's really not hard to come up with a 10 character password, well, especially just, if you're using a space. Let's just do this. Just type in 10 characters, just 10 just ones. Let's see how that... Uh, just type in all ones, yeah. huh? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, and this is just ones. Now, this is not a good example of a good password, but just ten characters long. I mean, well, that's bad because it's. <laughs> Again, this is why Lex isn't this in is, charge of doing this. This is why I don't get to do passwords. But, but okay. So, give me a ten character password. This is. All right, that's fifteen characters. This is a 15, password. 14, 13. I want to get to ten. Right there. That's okay. Two. So as long as you don't use all ones like I just did, right? It's going to take 1.98 months for someone to crack that if they did a billion guesses per second. So yeah. that level of complexity should be good enough. And that's I, I the, at, the, at the minimum. Now at we're the talking. Minimum. We're talking the minimum. We're not saying this is the what everyone's going to be doing. But as you can tell, it's really not hard to come up with a phrase. If you make that 12, it takes even longer. So you know, a length is more important. 10 to 12. I, guess. I would suggest 10 to 12, but that's just me. But so again, if you get a good, hard. make sure they have a good 10 to 12 character password that's not right. all ones. Especially if you add a space in there, it really adds up fast. You'll be surprised. So um, let's <clears> see, what else do we have in here? Now this this requirement here meets pa uh, password must meet complexity requirements. Now, if you go into explain, they talk about right here that same thing that we talked about how terrible it was back in the early 2000s. Old uh, school. They are, they're still doing it, obviously. We talked yeah. about it two weeks ago in the pre-show with uh, Intel. Their website actually had some of these similar things on there. They said, oh, you've got to have an uppercase, a lowercase, a digit, a special character. We don't care about any of that because we're not going for complexity. We're going for length. If, if you enable this, you might be limiting. You might have somebody who has a really great password that's 20 characters long. The problem is... Now you're requiring them to add a few more extra little symbols and numbers at the end that Made harder to remember. they might not remember. And they might yeah. come to you next week and say, I already forgot my password. Can you reset it, please? And guess what? Now they can't use that password anymore. So that could be a problem. So speaking of breaches um, and, and passwords, I know yeah. you've got your Bible. I call it, it's the, the what is it, the Verizon <coughs> Breach? Bible? Verizon Data Breach Investigation Report. A.K.A. Alex's Bible. My Bible. So these these come out every year from Verizon, they do a ton of research around global breaches that occur and large companies kind of help bring this data together to Verizon and Verizon kind of manipulates the data and brings it together so that we can understand what's going on. And in this report from 2018, uh, the link is in the bonus content, but if you go to page 8 of this um, article here, it talks about the top 20 action varieties in breaches. And guess what's number one? Stolen passwords. Stolen passwords. Or it, cracked passwords and stolen well, credentials. Well, stolen credentials is what they yeah. say. But that it, they, they also mentioned that, uh, and it's not, I don't have it on here, but it's 80% of all breaches could be avoided if we just used two-factor authentication and a strong password. So if you think of it that way, we could avoid a lot of incidents if we could create a stronger passphrase and enable two-factor authentication in your environment. Now, where possible. One other thing about two-factor authentication, SMS can be spoofed fairly easily. So yes. Be, there's be better wary. routes, yes. Be wary of that. If you if you don't have any alternative with SMS, um, and that's the only method of two-factor authentication, that's way better than no two-factor authentication at all. So I would recommend, if you can, <clears throat> grab like a, an authenticator app. I know MS, or, yeah, MSN has one, Google has one. Um, Face, I don't know Facebook. I'm I don't trying think to think. They do. I don't think they do either. But uh, go find your favorite one. There's a couple of them out there, but be be careful not to just. Do you get download you one stats on on on? Uh, I know you you showed me this yesterday. Stats on uh, large breaches. I do. Yes. So there's a cool website um, called Have or Have I Been Pwned? And this is this is a cool project that's actually from a security researcher whose name is Troy, and I don't remember his last name right now. But Troy, he's actually one of the good guys who's trying to help everybody and, and teach them about passwords. And what he has done is he's come up with a bunch of databases that he's aggregated together, 
And what you can do here is you can actually come in and find out um, if you have an account that's possibly been breached. It's pretty cool stuff. Um, but if you scroll down here under the, um, oops, here, there we go. So here's some, some big companies and the breach the, dates, the breach dates, how many accounts were compromised and what was compromised. Uh, so let's find some interesting. Find a Facebook. They, somebody brought that one up. Let's see if the Facebook is in here. Well, here's Adobe back in 2013 when they had a giant data breach. They had 152 million email addresses, password hints, passwords, and usernames. That was that was all of us. That was pretty much yeah. every. Yeah. Yeah. Shane called me up. He's like, change your password now. Okay. Change it today. <laughs> uh, let's see who else on there. I think it's in alphabetical order. Yeah, alphabetical. So, so you're you're in F. F. We yep. get an F. Control F to go find. That's. Eight Maybe. tracks, Facebook authentication. Um, that's that's all it found. Anyway. It doesn't have it on here, but they had about sixty million or one hundred and sixty million passwords breached, um, which is a, a very large number. And I don't know if that was considering everyone globally. I'd but imagine it have that, to be, That's right? a very very large number of usernames and passwords. So it's safe to assume that. Just change your password in that case. Don't yeah. don't just say, well, I hope it wasn't me and hope that your yeah. password wasn't compromised. So if you had a Facebook account, Facebook yeah. got breached, change your Facebook password. Exactly. And if you're using your Facebook password at your bank, looks like it's time to change all <laughs> your passwords. And this is why you don't use a uh, password across multiple locations because guess what? Now if, if you use the same fa password on Facebook <clears throat> and now it was breached and now that was the same credentials to log into your bank account, well, now you got to go change those too. Now you got now you're changing ten accounts at the same time. Whereas if it was just one password per one account, all you need to do is change one password once, and you're done. Yeah. So that's that's, that's part of the use your password right. managers, guys. Yes. Uh, they work very. I can't I can't stress that enough. And they also make them for your mobile device, so you don't have to always be behind your personal computer that you own that has your password manager on there. You can have it on your mobile device and take it with you remotely, which is why those are also a great option. It's, doesn't uh, Apple have like you know fa face identification and that kind of thing? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so w along with passwords, like bio biometrics. There we go. Biometrics. There we go. Biometrics. You want to talk I was about getting. some biometrics? I so, do. Apple's new newer phones they have their face uh, you know facial recognition scanning to unlock your phone. Well, <laughs> my personal opinion is they're okay. Biometrics scanners are okay, and. In, I'm sure if you went and Googled some faux pas or some problems that they've had with facial recognition, you know, with like well, parents, you think about parents it, having you their and I look unlocked. very similar. I feel bad. If someone it. did look like Alex, yeah, yeah. They if could, I take my they glasses off, we might. We, we're we might, identical. He twins, would definitely right? unlock my phone. In a <laughs> 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 so, what well, I would say is, and then is, you know, uh, you watch the spy movies, right? It's like finger, the eye recognition. You know, always watch some spy snatch somebody's eye or knock them out, stuff their head. You know, they grab their fingerprint off of like. A some boulder or a rock that they're like, how did they do that? Because, please, oh, never mind. Yeah. Yeah, you watched a lot. I've watched too many. Spy too many spy movies. movies. Yeah. The, the fact of the matter is, <laughs> if you can think of it, someone you know, and they're doing it in the movies, exactly. it probably could be done. It's probably possible, and not just that, but some of them can be bypassed, <clears throat> so they're not as secure as we might think. I mean, they try, and I, I give them props, and it's better than nothing. But, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> do, do you have any? Do you have another question? Dear cybersecurity dudes, if you have multi-factor set up, does password age matter? Thanks, Kyle R. I think that depends on what it is you're using to set up uh, multi-factor with, with your password. Now, like I said earlier, if you have a strong enough passphrase, the age of your password shouldn't matter, assuming that it's not been breached in one of these breaches that we've just discussed on have I, uh, haveibeenpwned.com or similar websites. But if, if you feel confident enough with your password, you shouldn't need to change it and probably shouldn't ever need to change it since if no one's no one's targeting that password and no one's breached that password, you should be fine. So are there entities that are more targeted? I mean, obviously Facebook, right? That's a big entity. They're going to target Facebook. Yeah. They're going to target, I mean, uh, Home Depot got breached. I think it was a credit mm -hmm. card breach or something. But yep. I mean, those kind of things. I mean, again, it's it really you know how far does your 
your net cast, right? I mean, right. if Amazon gets, you know, I'm doomed. If Amazon gets, <laughs> uh, you know, there's no more groceries for me. I don't even go to the grocery store anymore. So, again, if you hear of a breach, it's a good time to change your password. And, again, the passphrase, like Alex was talking about, it's like, you know, you come up with a nice long sentence, like the one I brought up earlier, and it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, two-factor authentication does definitely help because, you know, what is it? It takes a person, a token, and a... So it's what you have, what you know, and what you are. So you could have, like, a cell phone or a token. Uh, what you know would be, like, your password or a passphrase or password reset questions. Uh, what you are would be your biometrics. So mm -hmm. usually if you can combine two of those three things, chances are you're a lot more secure than most people because you have a, se a second set of fact um, of authentication, excuse me. Yeah. So. <clears throat> so have we cracked any passwords? It's about that time. It's about that time, my good friend. It looks like we've got about eight uh, passwords. Okay, I just want to read these because if So you we've get, been running this over the course of the webcast, right? This, this has been running in the background. We started it this uh, earlier. Let's see. Uh, 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 That's pretty uh, neat. Oh. Uh, Anything you They're need all readable. Okay. On the webcast. So nothing so. Lex. There is no Lex style really? sentences or <laughs> passwords on here. Let me here. see if I can make it Make bigger. it big enough so people can read it. So these are the ones submitted to us earlier. So first one, Gizmo154. That doesn't seem all that tough. If that's to your current password, change it. <laughs> yeah. Please don't use that one. <laughs> no. In fact, we found don't it use in, any of these. <laughs> we found it over the course of 27 minutes. 27 so, yeah. minutes. One, two, three, four, QWERT. Yeah, the QWERTY one. I see, love that See one. this one, how it looks all fun and complex. How it's got all these, yep. like... Yeah, it didn't take uh, less than 20 minutes to crack. Yeah. <laughs> gotta catch them all 151. That I, last one. What is the reference? Gotta catch them all. That'd... I hate my job. <laughs> 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 Kelly, you didn't submit that one, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Never. We won't tell them. And then there's Maggie 2016. Maggie 2016 so a common one I've seen uh, with password breaches, a lot of people like to put the year that their password was created because it adds an extra length to it. And it adds the it adds that add a number to your password. Well, yeah, this is what that, people end up doing. They get lazy and they say, ah, oh, just put in the put in the year. Because but again, it's that predictability, that entropy. The entropy. It becomes predictable Because you can point. predict. So usually if you put in your password files, you know, uh, Add any any year between 1990 and 2018. Chances are you'll find something like this. Yeah. Yep. So we cracked them. When, we I, them. when I say we, I mean you. Got them. You cracked them. So how many did we get? How many did we not? We crack? had. Or there ones that we got that did not get yes, cracked. Yes, we had a total of 16 passwords. We cracked. And I cracked eight. half. All right. I cracked eight. Congrats to those. Eight of those. So. So the uh, eight of you hours. who made it the other past eight. the 20 minutes of crack, good for you guys. <laughs> 20 minutes of crack. That just sounds like we're endorsing it drug sounds, use. Yeah. It sounds like something Lex would say. Ouch. Yes. <laughs> do, do it, sounds like, it sounds like a Lex password. <laughs> no, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> My password, you just go, man, your mind's filthy, and you kiss your mother with that mouth. It's just bad. So we got another question. Hey guys, anyone know of a script method to create a wireless profile that does not store the passwords in clear text? Thanks, Brian G. Are you talking about, hey Brian, thank you for sending that in. Are you talking about on Windows? Because I believe in Windows it doesn't matter. Windows just stores everything and sends it their way regardless. And there's other methods to grab those passwords, even if they are encrypted on Windows. Uh, it, so if someone can compromise your Windows Machine, chances are they can also compromise any password you've used on that machine, assuming it's uh, still in RAM or memory or somewhere where they can snag it. I hope that does that make sense. I just did you read I that just glazed, just, no, so, no, that, no, that was uh, no, I think you hit it. I think you hit it right. So, all right. Move Dear on. Lex and Alex, when using PDQ inventory.exe on the command line to import custom fields, is there any way to import computers that share the same name but belong to different domains? Thanks, Ryan C. Well, okay, so imports for custom fields, everything's based off of the computer name itself. So if you've got two of the same, it's you can have multiple entries trying to enter data at the same spot. So I'm unaware of it. I'm going to 
maybe the guys from support might know it different, can answer that one afterwards, but I don't think so. So, the crack master. I, that's not crack, a, that's crack not a, No, that's, that's not a nickname. Crack don't, kills. don't. No, just kidding, guys. We're not going to let that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> gonna let that uh, to not let that stand. Huh? <laughs> so, passphrases, guys. Length, complexity, unpredictable. Unpredictability. Be random. That's the key. Be random, but make sure you can remember it. And, uh, you know, uh, stay secure, my friends. I'm Lex. I'm Alex from PQ.com. Thank you. Thanks for joining our webcast today. Congratulations, Jeremy O. and Adam H., winners of PDQ Swag. Send us your info at webcast at PDQ.com. And don't forget to visit our jobs page. Yes, PDQ.com forward slash jobs. We've got three listings that uh, might interest you. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you back here next week.